think, yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, latest edition of uh, the Borderlands Forum. Uh, I'm really pleased and really excited about today's topic. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about culinary diplomacy. And uh, we're, uh, we're joined by uh, three friends, uh, Victor Aranda, Aron Lima, and also Julio Rodriguez, who are the creators of a really fabulous book, uh, Tacos HMO, uh, Guia Minima, uh, The Minimalist Guide to Tacos of Hermosillo, our, our Sonoran uh, capital to the south. Uh, my name is Alex Lapierre, and I am the program director for nonprofit Border Community Alliance. And uh, our mission is really bridging the border and fostering community through education, collaboration, and cultural exchange. And I can't think of a better diplomatic mission than uh, bridging the border through food and more, even more so through, through tacos. Uh, so I wanna thank you all for joining us today. And I'm gonna turn it over um, to these three awesome Hermosiense creators of this book. Well, uh, thanks Alex for your nice presentation. And first of all, I would like to thank the Border Community Alliance for, for this invitation. Um, I read a little bit on your webpage, your mission and, and your values and it's great stuff that you're doing. And I must say that this break has a little bit of that because uh, I myself, who is the publisher of the book, uh, I live in the US in Washington state in Olympia and uh, Victor who brought the, you know, the text and make the photos of the book and our own living in Hermosillo. So it's kind of a border thing, you know, and collabor collaboration work. So uh, before I introduce Victor and Aaron, my colleagues in Hermosillo, I would like to, uh, you know, say hello to everybody in the talk. I don't see them, but, <laughs> um, and what I will do, uh, I will read uh, kind of the introduction of the, of the book, which I think explains pretty well the idea of the, of the project behind it. And then I will give the, the work, uh, the, you know, to Victor so he can explain because Victor is basically the author and the photographer of, of the book. So he will share with you his, his, his tours to these tackle places and how, how he took the pictures and how he interviewed the, the people doing the tacos, you know, or taqueros. <laughs> There's a little bit of Spanglish here, so I apologize. But uh, so let me start by describing the two objectives that motiv motivated this uh, minimal guide. First, we wanted to expand some entries from the blog A La Grande Le Puse Cuca, where Victor, the writer, since 2009, documents with uh, pictures. Hello? Am I there? Oops, I need yes, to. You are. You're, yes, you are. Uh -huh. Yes, you are. Yeah, I, I just need the text here. Sorry about that. So uh, where Victor documents with photos and comments, his visits to places in Hermosillo, to tackle places, no? And uh, the second objective was to have a quantitative response to the apparently simple question of how many tackle places there are in Hermosillo. No? And we thought that these two objectives were complementary, and this guy is the result of exploring them. And while, of course, trying some of these tackle places ourselves, which was the best part of the whole project. The book shows photos and describes 40, 40 tackle places in Hermosillo that we think, uh, that we strongly recommend. And we think that this set, this subset, uh, is an excellent starting point if you want to know the more than 600 tackle places that we estimate exist in, er in Hermosillo, according to our estimates. Uh, in this context, the guy also shows uh, a couple of maps that give an overview of the city tackle scene and, uh, and also includes a list of all the tackle places that we found in Hermosillo through uh, social media like Facebook and you know Google Apps and stuff like that. Uh, this is, I, I must say, for people that are uh, historians or, you know, um, in the academic area, that this is not an academic paper. <laughs> so our definition of taco, which is any food wrapped in a tortilla, and of taco place, which we define as any place that sells tacos, surely differs from other kind of definitions and, um, uh, uh, you know, and we're okay with it. And moreover, we accept that this is a partial list 
the four taco places is a partial list um, and open to public derision. <laughs> and, and I note here that the public is, is any person that has had uh, at least one taco in Hermosillo. So we're okay if people do not agree with our, you know, our picking of four, these 40 places. And Aaron and Victor, would exp they will explain better how, how they pick these places. Uh, I will say also that during the tours to document this guide, we witness uh, that taco places in Hermosillo are business that do not fit on a standard. Uh, you know, the humble taco we think embodies multiple variations of, of the single theme and, uh, and our senses, are, you know, are grateful for that. Uh, in Hermosillo, you can find taco places in the early morning, in the afternoon, and, you know, late at night. And there are small, medium, and, you know, large size taco places. And maybe for the surprise of some, uh, there is a world beyond what we call the carne asada, you know. So in Hermosillo, you can find tacos of barbacoa, birria, cowhead, canasta, carnitas, seafood, fish, suadero, al pastor, Arab style, uh, veggies, and so, so, so forth and on. And even what uh, some people call nothing tacos, which by the way are the potato tacos, but <laughs> some people call them nothing tacos. So I will suggest you that you consider this, this guy an invitation, most of all. Uh, we want that you let yourself loose in the city on all the city, by the way, you know, north, south, east, west, you know, fancy parts, not that fancy parts, and uh, to enjoy it, and even better, share share a good taco. That's very important. Sharing, uh, get to know the people willing to share their delicacies, which in many cases, and I must stress this point, are hardworking families in Hermosillo. Uh, in these pages, in these pages of the book, you you will notice that it's not unusual to find taco places that have decades in the business, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, even more, <laughs> which can, it was a nice, nice finding. Uh, I personally have tasted few tacos de carne asada as good as the one made, made by El Chato, which is one of the 40 places there, who in his taco place, was able to summarize the spirit that this guy aspires to transmit. And uh, when we visit this taco place, I started explaining to El Chato that we would like to ask him some questions and you know take some pictures. And uh, his short answer was, I will say, enlightening. He said, "You know, stop, <laughs> kind of shut up, and try the tacos first, and later we can talk." So we did. And they were delicious. You know, one of the best tacos that I have had uh, of carne asada. I will end by saying that Michael Pollan says that you should shake the hand that feeds you. And uh, it is my hope uh, that the great uh, photos and texts of Victor Aranda, uh, together with the editorial design by Aaron Lima, uh, the editing work by Diego Berrospe, who is not here, and the prologue by Ignacio Lagarda Lagarda, which I will say is the city chronicle. And he, he was willing to write this prologue that described the history of the taco in Hermosillo, which is, I think, really nice. Uh, do justice to the female taqueras and male taqueros of my hometown, Hermosillo. With that, I would say enjoy. And I will pass the word to uh, Victor, who he, was, he had the greatest job who was to go to these taco places, eat them, try them, take pictures, and uh, talk with the, with the owners and the workers there. So thanks. Victor. Thank you, Julio. And uh, first of all, uh, like Julio said, thank you for all the people in the Border Community Alliance. Thank you to Alex. Thank you to Rocio for the, for the invitation. And thank you for all being here. Uh, uh, yes, it was a very, very hard labor to be around the taco places. As Julio mentioned, uh, we counted as more than 600 taco places in Hermosillo. 
So I have to to do the pilgrim to every one of them. Uh, of, of course, I I I I have not been on the 600 tattoos, but I've been in 110 or something. And what I can say of the 110 that I personally enjoyed the tacos, uh, there was not a bad taco. Uh, all the tacos were, were, were great. So what we did on this list uh, was based on my personal, uh, my personal uh, favorites because you kind of go to orbitate to around the same places over and over. So we start to as to policemen, to taxi drivers, to uh, family members, et cetera, et cetera, to make a list. And then we compile that list and compare with the online ratings that Julio uh, made us a favor to analyze all the data. And we came with these 40 taco places that we really like. This, uh, so I want to make very, very clear, this is not a top 40 taco places in Hermosillo. It's just only 40 tacos places that we went and uh, they were delicious. So uh, there is a lot of taco places to, to explore the, the whole city. You can eat a taco, a different taco for a little bit of more than two years and you will be, you will be happy with that. So um, we uh, talked to the, to the families and first of all, this is, uh, I would like to say this is a kind of love letter to all the taco owners and all the taco families that uh, work in the taquerias because it's a really, really hard work. If you uh, go to taco places in the morning, the people have to be around at night making all the stews and all the prepping, you know, the shopping and et cetera, et cetera, from very late at night. And they came up very, very early in the morning, at three or four in the morning to get the tortillas, to get the vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. And in the taxi in the night are the same. It's just, it's just a lot of a lot of work uh, that uh, we think that sometimes is not uh, is not very appreciated because you only go to the taco stand, you go to enjoy your the taco, and you yeah, and you left. But the people are very very passionate about what they do, and this is uh, kind of for say uh, to pay tribute to all these people, to these all these hardworking people. As William mentioned, uh, we began with this blog in 2009, I think, uh, but because nobody uh, reads blogs anymore, anymore <laughs> so we kind of left uh, that, that behind, but we wanted to, to, to do something uh, that, that we can have uh, physical um, evidence that, that we made this work and we went with very, very, uh, with a lot of caring and a lot of love. Uh, so that's uh, basically what what we did. As you can see in the photos in the book, and the photos that some some of the photos that you're seeing here are are, are actually on the book, and um, the uh, and just to share the histories of all the taqueros and taqueras uh, from Hermosillo, uh, because everybody has a very very uh, beautiful history. Everybody wants to share their history and. And that's about it. That's, that's, that's just the main goal of the of the of the book, to get a, to get something, so you can not get lost in the city when you go to when when you arrive in the city and you want to to start to enjoy some tacos because if you want to enjoy some tacos, many 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 cities in Mexico has amazing tacos. So we are from Hermosillo and we decide to. To do it here, but uh, if you go to Guaymas, Obregón, uh, Nogales, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the then uh, all the places in Mexico have, has great, great tacos. But uh, uh, here in Hermosillo, uh, as as Julio mentioned in his introduction, besides the carne asada, there's a lot of tacos to to enjoy. But uh, basically, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, Aron, would you like to share a little bit as well as the designer of the project? Yes, uh, uh, I'm going to try to speak English because the tacos inspire me to do so. <laughs> and the, um, we print uh, 500 copies of the, of the book. It, it's an uh, independent publishing. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, a, a a little number of books that we that we have print, and we have to we want to 
um, to to share this uh, with the uh, with the most uh, number of people. When we are going, when when we were uh, designing the, the book and taking the pictures and etc., uh, I discovered that the book is not on. It's not about. It's not only about the tacos. Uh, the book uh, for me is about the people who made the the tacos, the taqueros and the families, and that uh, there is a there is a, a, a big uh, a big story in in any of the uh, the taquerias that we that we visit uh, some taquerias for example they don't want to participate in the in the project you know? they they don't ask they ask uh, why are you doing this uh, how much it's going to cost me uh, no it's free and we are trying to 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 show every uh, every everyone the the cultura the mexican the hermosillo culture of tacos and in as julio said Hermosillo uh, have a, lo a lot of uh, taco styles, not only carne asada. And, and for uh, doing that, the, the book, the design of the book have a, a, QR, a QR code that you can check in the pages. Here, I'm on, Alex se ve aquí. Yes, yes, the QR code is right there in the left corner. Uh -huh. In the corner, uh huh. You can take a picture with your phone and and they take you to the Google Maps address. And there is a, a little uh, description of what kind of tacos, uh, schedules, and places. And we prefer to show more people than, than text and uh, and for all our um, American friends, there's there's no be a, there a problem because you only if you know if you don't know how to get you can take the picture of the code, and they take you to the to the taco place. That, and that, that, and yes, that's that's it. The that's that's awesome. And and I uh, I just want to say uh, I really appreciate what the three of you said. Uh, you know, Julio mentioned about, you know, shaking the hand of the person that creates the food. And Victor said about, you know, it being a love letter to, to, to all of these um, uh, taquerias. Uh, and also Aron saying, it's, it's not just about the food, it's about the, the, the people. Uh, and I think that although it's a minimalist guide, it, it really captures all three of those uh, wonderful elements that they've, that they've described. Uh, and in fact, Last night, to get into the spirit, uh, we went to one of the, 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 the <laughs> places featured. We went to the Aces Taqueria, Taqueria Los Aces, which mm -hmm. is on page 83, and they do an El Pastor uh, taco. Uh, and Victor was explaining to me that they actually have a unique way of, of making the El Pastor. Victor, did you, did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, the, this, this, this taqueria is, uh, is a very, very old taqueria. They were changing places. Uh, the, uh, the place that they are actually right now in, uh, I think more than 30 years there. So uh, the difference is uh, there, tax al pastor, but um, the traditional way to make tax al pastor is with Chile Guajillo uh, down in the, in, in, the, in, in the south. But here, since we are from Sonora and we take uh, things our own way. The 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 chile is made uh, the adobo for, for the carne is made from uh, from uh, Chile Colorado. That's that's the original chile. So the flavor is a uh, familiar uh, pastor flavor, but it's very very different. It's uh, it's more savory, a little bit more sweet. So well, I think maybe Alex who has the palate more more uh, more new to this or more recent to this. So he can explain a little bit better of the of the flavor. That is very very different to a to a pastor taco to a regular pastor taco. Yeah, it, what I loved about the place too is that it just has it, like the whole place, the whole experience kind of captures a spirit. And you know, I was I was I was eating my tacos last night. I was like, you can never have this north of the border. It's just something about being down here um, and you know being in these places that really is just so special and unique. Um, and, and from from the gastronomic perspective. Um, as well. Uh, what, one question that I have for, for, for you all 
is um, Americans may not be familiar with the fact that in Mexico, you guys have tacos for the morning, you have tacos for the night. Can, can you talk a little bit about the difference between those? Yeah, I think Victor can uh, you know, answer that question. <laughs> Just let me say one, one, uh, one, uh, one comment there. Uh, my, my wife, she's from the US, from Pennsylvania. And uh, the first time that she went to my hometown, <laughs> My family brought her to a place that we love, and they, uh, you know, you can have breakfast at like 7 a.m. Taco, uh, thong, you know, thong tacos. So she was a little bit <laughs> of the idea, but it, that's the kind of thing that you can find there. And Victor can <laughs> can explain more. It's 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 like uh, more of the of a tradition thing that uh, that's more of a tradition thing, most of anything, because. Uh, uh, if you go in the morning, you can go to have uh, 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 beef head tacos or uh, beer head tacos or etc. But uh, many people, even even here, in see a surprise if uh, because traditionally carne asada you ate at night or late at night uh, in the evening. But you can have uh, carne asada tacos in the morning and uh, vice versa. You can have uh, cabeza tacos in the night. Uh, so it's not it's not like a rule or like um, something that is that it's uh, stated or 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 so, something like that the thing is that uh, we have a lot of tacos um through all the day so i think the only exception to that rule is the um fish tacos or taco fish uh how, how they call it here um most of them are in the morning or until the evening but uh, in the night is very it's very hard to 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 find a a, a fish taco around here but most of uh, most of the thing is just like uh, uh, carne asada you eat at night and cabeza you eat in the morning. That is the most representative uh, tacos here in Mosia. And uh, another question I have for the three of you is if you had to recommend one taqueria from the book, um, say there uh, someone from here from Arizona or the United States was just an animal seal for one day, uh, where would you recommend them to, to go? To try. I can start. I would say El Chato, you know. But I mean, it's, I mean, maybe there are vegetarians in this talk, uh, so that, that wouldn't that wouldn't fit. But uh, he uh, actually, by the way, I I, may, I want to make a comment. This this book was was made before COVID. Okay, so unfortunately, I know already because Victor told me that some of uh, uh, at least some of the people that made tacos uh, in our book. Uh, unfortunately, some of them uh, passed away because of COVID, um, which was really sad for me. But anyway, I don't know if all of them are still alive, the 40. Uh, I hope so. I, I, I heard that one may be out, out of the grid because of, of, unfortunately, of COVID. But having said that, uh, even if it's in the past, I will say El Chato, uh, if you like uh, carne asada tacos, uh, you go to this place and, you know, there's this guy called El Chato, <laughs> which is his nickname, of course. And he has, uh, you know, he doesn't have cut meats. He has the whole piece of, of, of meat. And then he asks you what you want. And he will, he's like a butcher basically there. And he's telling you what part do you want and which kind of steak do you want? And at what, you know, grade do you want it? And he will do it just there. You salt uh, he makes the tortillas, uh, you know, uh, by hand, and uh, they're they're spectacular. It's the cover of the book, by the way. So I'm I'm a bit biased, I guess, but that's my favorite. I don't know my colleagues. Aaron, which one is your favorite? Uh, I have I have two favorites. The the the, the chato is one, and uh, because when you taste uh, when you taste the chato, you realize that. That uh, that you never uh, have eaten uh, real meat. <laughs> no. It's that uh, the 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 meat that uh, the chato uses is uh, ribeye steak, and you are you are um, you are eating a, a ribeye steak in a taco, uh, basically, no? and, and it's great. And the other one is um, uh, Luisito. Luisito is a uh, barbacoa taco. And uh, it's um, um, 
have a, um, a long tradition of taqueros uh, in the city and, in, and it's very simple. There's, uh, there's not too many uh, salsas. There's, um, I, I, I remember I only, I only have one salsa, lemons and, and onion and cilantro. It's, it's the only, uh, the, the three ingredients that they put and because it's very simple, it's, it's one of my favorites. And in and, and, and first place is Chato. I, 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 I have to choose the same of uh, Julio. And another thing the the when we are when we were um, making the the, the book uh, the Netflix show Taco Chronicles uh, appears and there is a chapter in Hermosillo and for uh, a way to start uh, uh, for foreigners uh, to eat tacos in Hermosillo could be uh, tacos de Armando you no know? uh, it's a very good um, option and it's on the Netflix show and is um, in, in, the, in our book, uh, uh, the description, uh, we made first the description <laughs> than Netflix. <laughs> and, and, and you can, uh, you have a doubt and how, it, how is it? And, and you can watch the Netflix show. And when you come to Hermosillo, um, yeah, you, can, uh, you can visit Armando and it's a, a very good start. And for me, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult question because uh, if you ask me for also for, to that. yeah for 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 carne asada, I will say also El Chato, but they have a lot of great options uh, in the night. El Chato is is is, uh, is, morning, uh, is in the morning tacos, so you have to be there before twelve o'clock because uh, at twelve o'clock he sells all his meat and he he goes. So, and also, I don't know, uh, um, I think the, my other favorite will be El Terco, it's a uh, beef head tacos uh, that, is co and, uh, we, that, that, that are made in uh, what is called here Alamaya. Uh, they put the, the meat in a, in a pot and they bury it on the ground with, with holes and they cover it with, with dirt and they, they dug out on, on the next morning. So those are very, very, very good tacos because the, the, the beef head has this um, smoky taste from being buried in, 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 into the coals. So I think that will be my, my favorite tacos uh, from all the book besides from of the El Chato. Thank you. You're, making, you're all making me very hungry. Uh, actually, Aron introduced me to uh, Tacos de Armando uh, several years ago, and I liked it so much that we included it on our nonprofit's uh, tour of Hermosillo. And uh, it's pretty amazing now that once the Taco Chronicle show came out, you know, we used to not have to make a reservation, but now the line is down the street and uh, the popularity has gone through the, the roof. But it's so amazing to be at a place where you can sit down and have a glass of wine with your carne <laughs> Kind of a, a really unique experience uh, as far as uh, true, as true. Mm -hmm. so uh, uh, you know I, I would like to comment also on the on the spirit of border community alliance uh, I don't know how many of the people in this talk have been to actually to Hermosillo uh, but uh, I don't if you could put the map that I send you mm -hmm. just to make a comment there um, uh, I'm not sure is it there already? Yes, it's there, no? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, just for people that have not been there in Hermosillo, uh, you know, the city extends it's kind of uh, like Tucson, which, <laughs> you know, plain and, but it, it extends from, from south to north, it's about 14 miles. And uh, from uh, west to east is about 10 miles, okay? And, uh, Normally, when people go to, to Hermosillo, they will, like any other city that you go and visit a few days, you will stay in the downtown, which is the center, and go a little bit to the north, maybe, maybe cross a bit to west, east, but rarely you will go to the south, you know, the, the industrial part. And uh, so we make an effort of uh, to go, you know, the, the, the guide has, you know, we try to go northeast, uh, north, south, east, uh, west. So... 
if you go to Hermosillo to one of these tackle places, you may be like a little bit off because <laughs> you know, you know, you don't know where you're going. Maybe it's an industrial area. Uh, just for example, the Chato is an industrial area. So people that go there are making cars in four, you know, in four company. Then they just go out at noon for a taco and then come back. So the place is not nice. It's not a touristic place, but uh, you know, the tacos are really good. And some of those are have the same spirit that are, 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 you know, working people go there to get their lunch at noon and then just go back. Uh, so we make an effort to, you know, go over the place. I wanted to make that comment. And also I wanted to make the comment that uh, recently the census in Mexico was finished, 2020. So we have the latest numbers of Hermosillo and we're hitting the million now, uh, 900, I have the number here, 936,000 people. Um, and the state is working in the 3 million. So just to put a little things in perspective, no? Uh, I have the number that Phoenix is around 1.6 million. So I will expect that hopefully one day you have <laughs> about a thousand tack areas in Phoenix. And I hear that the Board Alliance is in Tubac. Am I correct? Uh, and Yes. I found the number that, I don't know if it's true, but you will tell me that it's about 1,375 people according to the numbers that, that live there. So I don't know how many taco places you have, but it is Hermosillo. It is one of the great advantages. I mean, you know, all big cities or small, medium, kind of medium-sized cities um, have disadvantages. Of course, no problems They're related with a lot of people doing a lot of stuff together. But one of the advantages is that you can, you know, in one in a couple of days, uh, if you like tacos, visit at least two or three of these uh, options that uh, the city provides to you. Yeah, this is pretty amazing that those numbers that there's uh, the same amount of residents of Tubac as there is Tacarias. That's <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty awesome. One for each day, man. One for each day. I, I but, like. The <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, um, why don't we go ahead and open it up to a, a Q and A uh, to folks uh, that are joining us today? Uh, if you have any questions, Alex, uh -huh. sorry, sorry, I, I want to to make some um, notes. Me gustaría, I would like to say in uh, to say in Spanish, and then you can translate. Okay. The uh, una taquería debe de tener. Si puedes traducir yeah. simultáneamente. A, a, a taqueria should have. Tortillas hechas a mano. Handmade tortillas. Refrescos en botella de vidrio. Sodas in glass bottles. Eh, este sí lo voy a decir en inglés. A free salsa bar. <laughs> True. Uh, uh, you, you, you beat me to it. I was going to say that too. <laughs> sí. uh, uh, Aron, Aron has visited the United States and has heard on the radio, um, you know, uh, announcements saying, oh, we have a free salsa bar. <laughs> and for Mexican people, that's not even a concept. It's, it's, it's not about being free. It's, it's a part of the experience. So this idea of, of having a free salsa bar is pretty uh, not under, really clear for uh, a sonorense like, like, like him. <laughs> <laughs> eh, Tiene que tener un, una locación en una esquina. It has to have a, a location on a corner. Eh, tiene que tener un horario eh, definido. It has to have a set uh, hours of operation. Y siempre tiene que ser, tener un tercer ayudante. And there also, always has to be a third helper. Que no hace nada. <laughs> Who doesn't do anything. <laughs> But he's there. Or he's there. <laughs> Y es, muy, y es muy importante que eh, existan pichones alrededor y, y algún perro. Uh, it's really critical that there's also pigeons surrounding the establishment and that there's also a dog uh, somewhere around it as well. Y entre más gente esté en la fila, mejor. And the, the longer the line, the, the better the taqueria. So those are the, the golden rules. Those are the, the, the rules. commandments from the Hermosienses here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, with that note, we'll go ahead and open.
open it up to the, the Q&A. And uh, it looks like we're already having questions here into the chat uh, box. And Mindy and Gary um, ask, how can the book be purchased? Uh, I'm down here in Hermosillo right now. So if you would like a copy, um, I'm going to write my uh, email in the chat box as well. Uh, shoot me an email and I would be happy to bring you up a copy uh, to our office in Tubac, Arizona. And, uh, and I think you'll, you'll really like it. Although the book is in Spanish, it is a minimalist guide. So um, if you're learning Spanish, it's a great way to learn Spanish. It's also a great way to make yourself uh, hungry uh, in Arizona and also uh, give you kind of wanderlust to go to Hermosillo as well. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and write my, my email in there and feel free to, um, to send me an email and, and tell me how many you, copies you would like. And I'll, I'll swing by Aaron or Vic, uh, Victor down here and pick up those copies and bring them back to you. In, and I think I'm gonna come back on Tuesday next week. So uh, they should be available um, after, after Tuesday. How much are so, the copies? For uh, they're $10 each. $10 each. Uh -huh. Definitely would like one. Well, I'll send you an email. Perfect. Sounds great. I'll send that email right here. Um, the second question comes from my friend Jerome. Uh, could you talk more about the shawarma like meat on the vertical spit? Uh, so I'm thinking he's saying about the al pastor tacos. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do you want to dig in Victor there? Yes, well, these are uh, pastor tacos. They, there's actually uh, uh, the history says that there are uh, actually original shawarma tacos. They came from Lebanon, uh, but they made with uh, with goat there. So uh, we kind of uh, tropicalized uh, these things and we made it with pork. And instead of uh, doing with parsley and garlic and Sarah, they put chili on them. So that basically that's just. Uh, uh, cuts of uh, of pork. Uh, I think it's uh, leg and shoulder pork, and they just stack over each other, and they put it uh, on this uh, on this uh, pit, and they just uh, and they just uh, serve it. It's life. Yeah. You should mention that at the end, normally they will have a pineapple. Uh, oh yeah. yeah start in the end. No idea why, but there's a pineapple there, and. Some of the taco uh, people, I mean, some of the taco makers, uh, there's like a show going on that they cut the meat and the pineapple is flying and they catch it with the tortilla. It's pretty nice to see. Uh, not all of them, <laughs> kind of the, you know, the professionals, but uh, it's a good sign if you enter and the guy's like dancing with the, the pineapple and tortilla and the meat, that is a, it's a good place. Um, any, uh, feel free to also unmute yourself if you want to ask Julio, Victor, or Aaron as well, if you have any questions. Um, this is our moment of taco diplomacy between our two countries. I had a question. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Sure. Please, Andy. Okay. I wanted to ask if there are any styles of tacos that are specific to Hermosillo, um, you know, as opposed to other parts of Sonora like percheron or anything just special about Hermosillo tacos? Well, uh, I can start there and, and then, then Aaron and Victor can, can jump in. But, you know, uh, the, the book has an historical introduction from, like I say, from the, the city hires every, I don't know if every three years or six years, uh, a, a historian to be the chronicle there. Um, and right now, the, the guy that is doing that work is called Ignacio Lagarda Lagarda. And in his, I mean, I didn't know this, but in his prologue, uh, he explains more or less the history of the taco in, in, in our hometown. And, you know, mostly the whole cultural thing comes from the South, in our case. I mean, you know, the tortilla came from the South. And of course, we use the, 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 the wheat tortilla, not the corn tortilla, no? We got kind of the big difference. Um, but there in, 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 the, in his prologue, he explains that even the uh, you know, indigenous communities had this kind of idea of the taco already. Uh, so I will say that we didn't invent anything, but we perfected the, the, the carne asada taco. I will say, but as Victor says, for, for my surprise during this, uh, you know, during making the, the book, 
is that more than half of the taquerias are uh, head tacos. And uh, it's a really thing for breakfast and for people going to work. And so I will say that th those two are the bigger, uh, you know, the, bigger, the biggest uh, taco that you can find is carne asada, which is all, all of north of Mexico. And, you know, people in Monterrey will say that they have the best and people in Chihuahua will say they have the best. And I'm from Hermosillo and of course we have the best, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to try them all. And uh, also in Tijuana, by the way, they have a, <laughs> a little bit of fight there. Uh, and, but I will say the, the, the biggest surprise for me, the, one of the big surprises in the book is the, the head taco is a really, I mean, there's fabulous tacos of that if you like it, of course, but it's highly consumed in the morning for people going to work and as, as a launch thing, you know, uh, and, and, and we have a few examples in, in the book. Uh, I don't know if, but Victor can, I guess, expand a little bit more. Yes, I think as, as Julio said, the, the main difference here is in, in other parts of the of, of Mexico, they they say they say carne asada tacos, but uh, I think that the the difference here is uh, most is just uh, the meat over over charcoal and salt, and that's about it. Uh, in other in other places in Mexico, they serve it with they marinate the meat or they put pepper on it or etc. etc. So it's very different. I think that this showcases and uh, the quality of the meat here in Sonora. Uh, but um, I think, as Julio says, also the cabeza here is not a uh, very popular popular thing in most of Mexico, but here in Hermosillo, as Julio says, is uh, served mostly in the morning because it's very hard, it's very, it's very filling. So uh, you get two or three tacos at the cabeza and then you go uh, by your work and you don't have to be worry about being hungry in a lot of lot of time because uh, because of the of the quality of the of the meathead is uh is very hard hardy is very rich so i think that's those are the two main tacos that are differentiated here in 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 hermosillo also as you mentioned burros percherones but they are not originally from from here there's a little date that they came from uh, some, thing, some, some people say that it came from Guayma, some people say they came from Sinaloa, so there is not uh, a defined thing. But here in Hermosillo, they are very, very popular because uh, uh, there, there are a lot of places that sell them and a lot of them are very, very good. But, uh, and, and to add to that is, uh, you may know that we have the big tortilla, you know, the, like this gigantic thing that looks like a pizza uh, made with the uh, wheat. Uh, we call it tortillas o vaqueras, you know, but I don't know if you have seen it. And uh, I will say a, a local thing is that that uh, usually you will get like a burro, like you're saying, uh, with uh, like a burrito with uh, carne con chile, with the, you know, chili from Sonora and, uh, you know, beans and stuff like that. So that's also, a, a, I would say that you will not find too much outside Sonora uh, or Mosillo, basically. Yes, it, it, it could be the, for, for the start, carne asada, uh, and then um, cabeza tacos, and a uh, burro with uh, the large tortillas, and water tortillas or uh, um, sobaqueras tortillas. That's, that's, that's the, the, the point. But you can find uh, that uh, tortillas, for example, not only in Hermosillo. Hmm? You can find it on, on all the state. Yes, mm -hmm. and speaking of those huge bur burros, uh, Victor actually took me to a place called Los Longos, which has a very famous <laughs> for being, you're not able to actually finish the, the, the burro since they're so huge that you can see there in the picture. This is the one in the picture. Yes, yeah, and that's another place that's very co close to the Ford factory that they, they mentioned that are that the biggest Ford factory in the world there in Hermosillo uh, as well. And uh, mm -hmm. I just want to say, too, that we're actually tri-national. We have Nancy joining us from London, and she says that we have many places in London where the meat is cooked on a, on a stick uh, from the Middle East, right? The shawarma that's mm -hmm. on the chicken and, and the lamb uh, that Victor was talking about. Uh, and then she also says uh, here, Aron, if you can go back to the map uh, uh, page, she says there's a street on the south of the map where there are uh, red dots uh, are side by side down the street. What neighborhood is that on the bottom right? Maybe that one right there, yeah. 
what she wants to know that that neighborhood which one the on the 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 bottom right there that there's a a street there with uh oh yeah that's the that's that's the that's a uh, that area of Hermosillo is called Nuevo Hermosillo. That is uh, the, when, the, when the Ford uh, Motor Company uh, factory uh, came here to Hermosillo, they, had, uh, they, they needed a lot, of, uh, a lot of resources, a lot of human resources. So they basically built a little, ci a little city uh, next to it so the workers can, be, can live there and they and, and they come to the to the to the to the Ford factory and all the and all the suppliers of the of Ford. So there is a long boulevard that is full of with a lot of tacos there. So that's that's near the place where the Longos are. That's near the place where the Chato is. And I think the one another two or three taquerias that, that are featured on the book are 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 from that area. It's just a little a little series that is well that is not so apart right now because the city has grown so much but uh but they they usually call the the nuevo hermosillo to all that of that area new, new, new hermosillo the new hermosillo <laughs> that um, is not that new but. yeah <laughs> uh one one thing i want to touch on that i think is very unique in the book that a lot of people north of the border uh don't know a, a unique uh tortilla a uh, unique taco is, is uh, kawamanta. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite Sonoran dishes. Could you talk a little bit about, about that, please? Uh, the kawamanta, well, uh, you, actually uh, they were uh, called uh, kawama tacos. Kawama is the, uh, the sea turtle. They used to uh, uh, fish it. Fish, fish them and cook them. And there is this very strong flavor. I have the reminiscence because they didn't, because it's an endangered species, you are not allowed to cook it anymore. So right now uh, we have uh, this, um, this like variation or this uh, option that is called kawamanta. It's, uh, it's called, it's with, uh, I don't know the name, the name of the fish in English is uh, manta. Ray, Ray. 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 Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's made from ray and they put a lot of spices there so they can mimic uh, kind of mimic yeah kind of mimic the flavor of the of the citron mm -hmm. so there's just basically a stew with uh, onions uh, celery a lot of cumin uh, oregano etc etc chiles and they just boil it until the meat just is very very tender and you get the tacos like the one they are seen there on the picture and they're very very delicious yeah yeah, it's but like nice. like Victor says, there was a trans a trans translation there between the real kawama, and you know all our grandfathers and our fathers they kind of cry when they describe how great tacos were in Guaymas and you know and in, in, in the coast and uh, but good the, 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 now it's prohibited so you know it's a it's a federal a felony you can you can get busted once in a while you will hear news that uh, you know this place was selling underground. Uh, 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 tacos but um so we we now get the option which are pretty good i, I agree with you <laughs> pretty good option you know? we're we're actually joined by the person today who introduced them to me edgar is joining us today and uh but yeah it, ch it changed my life when i tried that and, and the cumin flavor it almost reminds you of, of middle eastern food when, when you when you eat it um uh, really really unique to, to sonora and that's that's one of the things i like to highlight too is that you know sonora Everyone thinks of the desert and of the, the high quality of, of the of the meat, but Sonora also has one of the longest coastlines of any of any state in Mexico. I think like a thousand two hundred kilometers. So you guys really have the best of both worlds, right? The best of surf and and turf. Uh, Absolutely. And to that point, some people, I mean, the map that you're seeing is the city of Hermosillo, but Hermosillo is also the municipality. You know, it's like a how do you say in, in the U.S. will be a county no i guess yeah the similar and it goes all the way to the coast so we have like you say everything and uh one of the taco places that we describe in in, in the book is is i will say is one of the most uh, successful taco places in, in sonora to they have uh places uh, you know all over the country now and they sell uh, taco fish so to that point you know we didn't mention too much about taco fish but 
you can find really, really good uh, taco fish, which is different style than the Baja, you know, the fish that you will find. So it, it's true. Yes, yeah, that one. It's called Pescadito. Pescadito. And, and I, I have the, the pleasure to know the owner. Uh, it's an interesting story, the way that he, he built his company. But now he, he, he's really, I mean, he's like a big taco industry now. Basically, he doesn't sell tacos now. He's a, he buys fish, you know, it's like... <laughs> He buys a lot of fish every 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 year, but uh, yes, we we do have a uh, uh, seafood tacos, which uh, I really like too. Uh, so J Jerome is requesting if you could review again the various type of tacos that are available in Hermosillo. <laughs> yes, the list. The, the list, the list, the famous. Uh, and, 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 you know, this is, uh, like I mentioned in the introduction, this is an incomplete list. You can always uh, dig more. Uh, but uh, the list goes that you can, you can find. Um, let me, I have it, I need to put it right here. Give me a second. So the list goes, oops. You can find tacos of barbacoa, birria, cowhead, canasta, carnitas, seafood, fish, suadero, al pastor, Arab style, veggies, and even the so-called uh, nothing tacos, which <laughs> like, like I mentioned, those are uh, uh, potato tacos. You can find tacos, and uh, Victor and I went to this place, I think it's 30, 40 cents, Victor, uh, the dollar. Mm, the, yeah. It's about less than 10 pesos, no? Uh, yeah. Great things. You know, use potato tacos with uh, uh, corn uh, tortilla. Man, delicious. And you don't, you don't need more, you know? Just a little bit of sauce there, and, and that's it. I think the one taco we haven't mentioned really, and you just mentioned it now, uh, Julio, was the canasta, the, the basket tacos. And oh, um, man, those are <laughs> there uh, as well. And I love them. C could you guys describe those, please? I can talk a little bit, and Victor can describe more, but the, 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 the ones in the book are really interesting because uh, the founder of that place is a pilot, uh, you know. Uh, you know, an, an army guy, <laughs> and, and he left his job in, in Mexico, around central Mexico somewhere, uh, and he founded this place where they sell canasta style, which is from the central region of Mexico um, uh, style tacos with his family. So, Victor, you can you can describe more the huracán, no? Huracán. Yes, it's the taco de canasta or huracán. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the guy was a was a captain of the of, of our air force. So uh, so he quit his job and now he makes uh, tacos de canasta. <laughs> uh, this tacos de canasta is uh, they are basically just um, a, a tortilla. Well, like all the tacos, a tortilla with, with the stuffing, but they put it on on uh, on a basket and they fill the basket with all the tacos stuck up on upon each other and they uh, I don't know if, if I describe it they will sound delicious but they are they put uh, boiling oil flavor boiling oil over the tacos and they close the basket and they remain uh, very very hot throughout the day and they all the all they get it, like fried juicy, no, on, juicy. on their own juices and the oil. It's uh, it's, it's difficult to explain, uh, but uh, they're very delicious. And as Alex would like to say, maybe they are very delicious. They we have um, they they are mainly from the from the south, as Julio said. But we have now here in Rosillo uh, very a very good uh, uh, representation of examples or representations of, of, of those tacos. This taco de canastora was one of the. And one of there, the... there is the basket here in the in the photograph. There is, there is, there is, I, there is the basket. Uh, it's on the on the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of the typical flavors are like mole rojo, the red mole, uh, uh, potato. Um, Chorizo. Chicharrón. Chicharrón. Oh, man, those are fantastic. 
the, 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 the good thing about this place, the Tacos de Canasa, el, el huracán, there's this called, uh, is that the, the guy made his own mole, the guy made his own uh, tortillas, the guy made his own chorizo, the guy made his own chicharron, etc., etc. So it's all made from scratch. So uh, the flavor is very, very different, but it's delicious. I think I'll have to go to breakfast there tomorrow morning and take advantage <laughs> of being done. <laughs> <laughs> awesome any other questions uh any brave souls out there that we haven't heard from maybe yet uh that want to improve their taco knowledge when with here with we have the the taco senseis with us right now nope uh nancy says uh how about a cookbook as a next project what, what do you think of that <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I should mention that there's a, in that sense, there's a really, really good, famous uh, book called uh, Cocina Sonorense, no, Victor? Mm -hmm. She's in like the fourth edition, I think. It's the a same. great book. You can Big download edition. You can download it. It's incredible, but you can download it from, because it's, uh, it's financed by the uh, cultural society there in Sonora. And uh, maybe we can, you know, send you the link and you can share it with your colleagues there in Border because it's fantastic. And the last edition is beautiful and you can download the PDF and the recipes are, uh, there you go. I don't, I think was part of it. Uh, uh, the writer is uh, uh, Healy, which is a academic uh, person there in, in Hermosillo. And they have, you know, improved it through like 20 years, I think. So I, that market is already taken. <laughs> it's a really good book. I strongly recommend it. Uh, I have participated in the graphic and editorial design of that book. It's the sixth, uh, the sixth edition, and uh, is the um, the principal guide for uh, uh, for uh, for cooking in in Sonora. Uh, some of the recipes uh, sounds a little bit strange. That's because are very old recipes, and the ingredients uh, have changed. And of course, it could be a, a, a natural a next step for, for us to make um, a recipe book. Maybe Victor, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not, um, it's not that far fetched the, the idea, but. Uh, but, we'll... but we need, we need a cook. We, we are not. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made a lot of tacos and, and, and we cook our own tacos, but we are not that experts on the on the matter. <laughs> awesome. I, I just want to mention too, Aaron, si puedes ir a la, a la, el de Rocio, que hizo Rocio, the, the grafico. Um, hey. oh, I just want to mention that my, my wife has a small little contribution in this book too. And there it is right there. Uh, just like if you're having tea in England, uh, like me. <laughs> Is, uh, this is the appropriate way to eat a taco so tea time <laughs> tea time is out right <laughs> the, the, the pinky is very 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 important for the taco for the taco <laughs> etiquette there you go there you go right there that's, that's the, the etiquette uh, <laughs> uh, i i i asked i asked rocio to participate with us uh, she's a, a great graphic designer and then i send the, i send her this picture of me <laughs> <laughs> And Victor's wife eating, and and uh, she sent me the, the the graphic to use in the for the for the book and the social media, mm -hmm. and then this, this is the result. She's she's here listening in with me right here, so she's she's laughed the whole Hello. time. Gracias, <laughs> gracias, Rocio. Yeah. Gracias, yeah. <laughs> so. Awesome. Uh, Nancy says you can share them with the queen if you have if you eat it like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That is fantastic. I I I will say that I found a yeah, it will be a surprise if she accepts <laughs> attack of the queen. But uh, yeah, we can share. Mindy and Gary asks, uh, what is the title of the recipe book? It's called Cocina Sonorense, right? Aaron, the, the book you shared. See, you, you can, you can uh, find a PDF version of the, in the Sonoran Institute of Culture. Victor, uh, uh, Aaron, we should send uh, the link, no? Yeah, to... and, we, and we can send the, the, the because, link. Because um, 
people might be interested. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do a follow up email to everyone, and uh, to, and I'll, I'll include that link. I've I've also been on there. Uh, Aaron also kind of works part time for the um, the state government's cultural bureau, and he uploads a lot of the the PDFs. Uh, and that's that. Yeah, that's one of them. That's that, that's on there. So I'll definitely uh, send that to you guys as well, so you can have it. And hopefully you'll cook some Northern cuisine in in London, Nancy. So until we can get you back <laughs> <out> here, so. <laughs> So if you can find Chile Colorado, you can do everything. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's the staple. <laughs> that red chili. Awesome. Any last words from anyone that would like to share anything? Question, comment? Nope. Awesome. Well, I just want to say this has been, uh, as someone has mentioned, this has just been absolutely delightful, uh, wonderful. Uh, I thank you, uh, the three of you all, for taking the time today uh, to share with the rest of us here in the Zoom uh, about Hermosillo's Tacos and culinary diplomacy. Uh, I, I, I really can't wait to have my next taco. And I thank you all. Thank you so much. Thanks. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you for the invitation. Bye.